Hello. So this is a fairly common problem, I think, um, with a fairly obvious solution. Let's say that there's some project out there, Monorail. Um, just to give you an example of a contact, let's say you're working on an open source project, and the thing you want to call is a function in another open source project. So you don't necessarily have their headers around, but you want to be able to provide a function that calls that other routine. So the obvious way to do it is just say, well, namespace monorail, size D hash, and you're gonna have you know, a little routine called monorail hash that takes a private value, passes it to monorail hash, and returns. Which is all nice and fine, except there are two things that will break you, and that's if monorail hash happens to add an extra default argument, um, anybody calling that after including the appropriate header will work fine, but you won't because you're calling the function with the wrong signature that doesn't exist anymore. The other thing is if they call, if they say, you know, using some other hash in some other namespace, then again, if you include the header, it'll know to call legacy rail hash, but not in your code, you're calling it in the wrong namespace. Um, so if you don't mod mind modifying callers, you can do this what I think is the right way, which is uh, you make a function called call hash and you make it much more generic and then anybody that used to call, you know, your class dot monorail hash now calls the generic version call hash with a pointer to the monorail hash. But number one's ugly, number two, uh, which is actually, it happened in my case, that might involve changing a lot of callers, which can be problematic. Um, so let's have some fun, let's try to work around this. You may have heard uh, that when, because template instantiation is delayed, you can sometimes have functions inside of templates that call things that don't yet exist. So you might think, oh, well, I'll just declare this with a defaulted template parameter. And the answer is, well, that actually still doesn't work because it doesn't know about the definition of hash in monorail. So we'll get a little bit more tricky. We'll declare the namespace and then call hash, and that way we can just follow through on it. This almost works. Um, however, there are no arguments to other func, sorry, to, it should say hash, uh, that depend on a template parameter. Um, so, okay, let's, let's make it depend on a template parameter. We'll just declare the default parameter still be int and then cast value to that. Then it can't de determine the call to hash until monorail hash is called. This actually works all by itself. It, uh, and, and people can call it, but only if the monorail header is included before yours. If the monorail is in, header is included afterwards, you get this weird message saying, well, hey, I, hash wasn't declared in this scope at the time that your class was here. Uh, and to make things worse, uh, MSVC has no problem with this, but Clang and GCC do. And then this is the, uh, the hack to get around that. You declare a small helper function in namespace monorail whose only job is to take an int and then construct an int when asked. And that way, this helper function invokes um, argument deduction. Then it finds hash in the monorail header. This works no matter what order the uh, monorail header is included. And just for the record, you, you really should do this, but just for an introduction into how template uh, instantiation can work. <laughs>